loss, but how does the feel of this one compare to Saturday's? Well, we generated a whole heck of a lot more. Um, it's the offensive part of our game at least looked right until the goalie stopped the puck. So that, you know, we've been, we played some games where I didn't think we generated nearly as much as we had hoped to, but tonight we seem to have gotten that part bad, better traffic at the net where, but then we had some pretty good looks. Uh, he made three or four really good saves on something through the seam. So there's a, a starting point there. The first phase for guys who feel like they should score goals is to get a chance. And, you know, Kyle got in alone almost in the exact, you know, very close to the exact same idea last game and it, and it didn't happen for him. And tonight it did. And, and a lot of times those guys, that's what they need. He had a bunch of other good looks in the game. So hopefully that's a starting point, get some good feeling with the puck around their net. We'll go next to Ken Weave from Sportsnet. Go ahead, Weaver. Well, uh, obviously mistakes are going to happen, but what do you think of the way that Hanela responded after making the early mistake? It was fine. You know, like he, he, uh, Playing his offside's a challenge, right? For any defenseman, he's done it before, but it's not comfortable. And you know, the second goal, just that turn to that side is different than the turn to the other side. So, yeah, Billy's fine. He's a good, good young player that's going to keep getting better as he gets uh, more experience and uh, more time in the game. We'll go next to Sean Reynolds from Sportsnet. Go ahead, Sean. Oh, that tweak that you did to the second and third lines, how did you feel it paid off? Well, I liked what they produced. I thought that Stas looked like he had a few good cracks at it, and uh, I liked the way that line moved the puck a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, we're fine. We're, we're looking for more. We're, we're looking for not for, for those two lines to generate a little bit more, but, but a good start. We'll go next to Jason Bell from the Winnipeg Free Press. Go ahead, Jason. Well, you talked about uh, Hanel already. What about uh, Logan Stanley? I thought there was times where he, uh, I thought he really played well tonight. At times he yeah. uh, supported himself, you know, stepping up, and the gap was good and some shots on net. Um, there's some, you, you talk about additions. How did he make out tonight? Well, I thought he was really good. I liked his last game too. He had the turnover at the end, um, and and that's kind of what you're left leaving the rink. But the body of the work of his game, the physicality in his game. He can make plays and he can move the puck. He made a great seam pass there in the third period up to the far blue, right hard on, on the tape. So I've liked where he's headed. We'll go next to Mike McIntyre from the Winnipeg Free Press. Go ahead, Mike. Well, just getting a night ahead of myself here. I'm not sure if we're going to get to you in the morning tomorrow, but with Paul Stasny's 1,000th game tomorrow and you guys maybe looking for some things to generate some good vibes and feelings, uh, how can that tomorrow maybe play into to, to doing that? Yeah, I mean, a reminder of experience. A guy who's been in the league this long has been through all of it and been such a good player for us. It would be nice uh, for the players to get to celebrate something here uh, in the second last game. It'll be good. We'll go back to Ken Weave from Sportsnet. Go ahead, Weaver. Just in sticking with Stastny, Paul, uh, what stands out when you think about him and his body of work? Um, experience more than, I mean, he's just, maybe that's not the right word. He's just a hockey man. You know, if you want to talk hockey to a guy, you go talk to Paul Stass and he's got great experience, great view of the game, great love of the game. You know, that higher, his entire life, right. Would have been in some ways in the NHL his, his dad's a player there. He's around the NHL room and he spent his entire you know, life as a, a really important player on every team that he's played. He's a great encyclopedia of the game. Uh, what's happening now, what, what it was like 10, 20 years ago. Um, it's good. If you like talking hockey, Stas a great guy to have a coffee with. We'll go next to Scott Billick from the Winnipeg Sun. Go ahead, Scott. Thanks, Gregor. Paul, um, Blake, Blake talked a little bit. He wasn't making an excuse, but he says it's, it's difficult right now to manufacture emotion right now. There's no fans and that sort of thing. How difficult is that for you to kind of coach or, or do you have to? Or is that something you leave up to the players to do instead? I mean, we talk about it. We know that we are responsible for our own emotional level. Hockey's a very difficult game to play fight, right? It's, it's all or nothing in that game. You know, tonight, you know, you get a great chance to score on the power play early. If you 
filled the building and the crowd went nuts. You'd feel something good. You'd feel it coming. Now you're, you're left with, you, you know, you're cheerleading on the bench. Keep going. It's right there. It's right there for you. So, I mean, look, at every team has to go through it. We're all playing in front of them. Most of us are playing in front of empty buildings. Um, you're in the playoffs. You're struggling a little bit. So you're not getting that positive feedback short of a goal, right? It's just another missed shot instead of the crowd giving you a good good cheer for a great play. Um, and it, and no anticipation almost builds in the in the building when you got it going. We had some really good offensive zone shifts, real good offensive zone time. And by that time, usually the crowd's heavily involved in it, and, you, and, and it drives you. I mean, the crowd is a big part of – the emotional level that hockey players can get to. I mean, you just think of what it's like, you know, in the playoffs in this building, right? I mean, you're as wired. You don't need for your team to be jacked up. It's there. Um, yeah, I mean, we've said all year it's nothing to do with our, our play of late, but, boy, we miss the fans. That's that's for sure. And final question to Sean Reynolds from Sportsnet. Go ahead, Sean. Well, I'm not sure if you said it, but I know a number of the players earlier when this skid started said, you know, at least this is happening now. This adversity is happening now, not later. Well, it's later. Uh, what kind of pressure does this season starting to close down create? Um, yeah, I don't. You know, the things that I was worried about at the start of the year is still the things that I'm worried about now, but I'm not more worried about it. I, I, I We'll get some players back in our lineup. will look quite a bit different. And in, uh, in 10 days, you know, we're going to play another playoff team and it'll be hard fought getting to grind right now and, and have to manufacture offense because it's not easy. Well, that's what playoff hockey is. So we're just going through it a little earlier than everybody else. Thanks very much, coach.